For many years now, kart racing games have been a staple genre of Nintendo systems. Although kart games existed before, arguably, the first kart game to have mass popularity with a similar formula to what we see now was the original Mario Kart. Released in 1992 for the Super Nintendo, Mario Kart went on to sell over 8.5 million copies. Since then, kart racers have only seen a rise in popularity, with seemingly every gaming and often movie and TV mascot getting in on the action. In fact, here's a list of kart racers that have been released since the original Mario Kart. Yeah, so there's a lot of them, all with varying degrees of success and quality. But to be honest, we're not here to talk about them today. Instead, I'm here to look at three of the most popular karting games for the Nintendo Switch from arguably the three most popular karting franchises. I'm going to compare level design, gameplay, story and discuss, in my opinion, which of these three games is my favourite. The games I have for us today are Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled and Team Sonic Racing. Before I get into specifics, let's take a brief look at the history of each of these games. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is pretty self-explanatory. It's the 8th Mario Kart. I know you tuned in for that kind of insight. Well, it's the 8th game plus some DLC, hence Deluxe. Mario Kart is by far the most popular karting franchise of all time. This version still to date is the most popular Nintendo Switch game and continues to sell well. In fact, the best selling game for the Wii U was Mario Kart 8 and the best selling game for the Nintendo 3DS was Mario Kart 7. You get the point, Mario Kart sells well. Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled is a remastered version of Crash Team Racing released over 20 years ago in 1999, which was the first Crash Bandicoot racing game. Since then we've seen four other Crash Racing games released on different systems. CTR Nitro Fueled sees the first return of a Crash Kart game to a Nintendo console since 2005. Sonic Team Racing is the seventh Sonic Racing game with the first released in 1994 as a Japan exclusive for the Game Gear, which needless to say, I, I never played that one. So. The first Sonic racing game released on a Nintendo system was the Riders game on the GameCube. Here you got to race on hoverboards rather than in cars, which, to be honest, sounds a bit cooler than it actually ended up being. Anyway, back to the games at hand. Traditionally, Mario Kart never had a story, never needed a story. The game revolves around its gameplay with a heavy emphasis on multiplayer racing and this tradition continues with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Really, the single player adventure revolves around the player competing in all the Grand Prix across different speeds. 50cc for new players all the way up to 200cc for the most experienced players looking for a challenge. Each Grand Prix consists of four races and it's your job to win them all. Along the way you can pick up coins in order to unlock new carts, new wheels and new parasails. You can also race in time trial mode against yourself, your friends and even Nintendo's own testers if you feel you are really that skilled. That's it. Every character and every race is unlocked from the start, apart from one but I'll let you find that one for yourself. Really, you're competing for your own sense of pride. You can also, of course, compete in the battle mode alone. I'll go into the battle mode feature a little later in this video, but just know there is one here. Team Sonic Racing, however, uses a story to have the player progress through a team adventure mode. 
the story is really just an elongated reason as to why the carters were racing in the first place. It makes a lot of sense really when you consider that Sonic's main ability is, well, speed. Yeah. Dodum Parr, an alien Tanuki, has invited Sonic and his friends to race in his cars on his tracks. The plot in a nutshell is, why? Ok, so it's nothing to write home about, but it is an effective way to have the player traverse through the story. The story element of the game is told through character, picture, speech bubbles and some ok-ish voice acting. The team adventure is traversed through a Mario Bros level selection screen, where you work your way through each race to earn stars for complete and different tasks. You also earn credits in order to buy mod pods, which are modification upgrades you can add to your car as you unlock them. Interspersed with races, you also have levels with other challenges scattered throughout the overworld. Examples of challenges include destroying targets, drifting past posts or collecting a certain amount of rings. Unlike Mario Kart, characters are there to be unlocked and are done so as you move through the single player campaign. What truly makes this Sonic Team Racing game unique is the team aspect. You're not just racing to win alone. You and your team of three must place highly to win. You can share power-ups and earn a speed boost by driving in the slipstream of your teammate. It's an interesting mechanic and really differentiates this racer from any other. Of the three games, if you are solely looking for a single player adventure with a somewhat fully fledged story, Crash Team Racing would have to be my recommendation. Although not in any way a deep or predictable plot, it is nice feeling like you are competing in all these races, working towards it and like an end game of sorts. The plot itself centres around Nitrous Oxide, a villainous alien who has travelled to Earth from deepest space to challenge Earth's fastest racer. If Oxide wins, he turns the Earth into a car park, keeping everyone as prisoners. Because, you know, why not? He loses, he doesn't, and goes home. The story mode is played out from a hub world where you drive to each level throughout this hub to race. To finish the game, you need to win every race as well as beat the boss at the end of each chapter, as it were. If you are looking for other things to keep you busy, you can then replay each level for CTR coins, achieved by collecting the letters CT and R in each of the levels. There are also relic races, which is a time trial whereby you can collect time boxes to freeze time for a certain period. You have a time to aim for to win the relic. And there are also crystal challenges where you must collect all crystals in a battle arena setting to win a purple CTR coin. Having these different challenges does make a nice change from your standard race and gives you an excuse to replay levels. Now let's look at how the carts drive. Of all the three games, Mario Kart, as you would imagine, drives in the most traditional way you would expect from this kind of game. You can collect power-ups, two at a time to either speed you up or slow down your opponent. After so many iterations of Mario Kart, this has really been honed over the years to give you a varied and memorable selection of power-ups. From the classic mushroom speed bursts and red and green chills, to the new Feather and Boo power-ups, there really is a large selection of whimsical and inventive power-ups to give you the edge in each race. The car operates in a very familiar way with the ability to drift around corners and jump over ramps to give you an extra burst of speed. All good, familiar Mario Kart racing. Crash Team Racing has similar controls, however you also have the task of using the opposing trigger button to burst while drifting. It takes a bit of getting used to, but when you get the hang of it, the timing comes fairly natural and makes an interesting change from Mario Kart. You can only carry one power-up at a time, which is a bit of a shame after being spoilt in Mario Kart. However, the power-ups are fairly varied. Not quite in the same league as Mario Kart, but there are still a few to experiment with. Next, we move on to Sonic Team Racing, where again, 
the carts drive in a very similar way to the other two games. You can drift and gather power-ups to use against enemies and boost your speed. Power-ups here are wisps, as they are known in the game, are varied, but again, not quite as varied as Mario. Also, I did find it a bit annoying that the picture of the wisp was not always clear regarding what that ability was. Moving away from the wisp, the real difference here is the team element. Now you not only have the option to use power-ups yourself, but also share among your teammates, which gives a new dimension to the gameplay. By sharing these power-ups and filling your team's ultimate meter, you can perform a team ultimate move, which give you and your team members unstoppable speed and the added bonus of breaking through barriers and travel over terrain which may have stopped you without it. Despite what you might think of it, it's hard to disagree that it can only be a good thing that developers are trying to add a new element and differentiate their game from the norm. You can also wiggle the right thumbstick on your controller to do some stunt moves in the air when going over jumps to give yourself an extra burst, which is also a nice feature. Of the three games, it's safe to say that Sonic Team Racing has the weakest selection of character and tracks. The game is only 15 characters, all from the Sonic universe. As somebody who isn't massively familiar with Sonic as a franchise, I wasn't able to identify all of them straight away. All characters do have their own unique personality, which is nice, but it maybe would have been good to see a little more variety in character choice, like that scene in Sonic and Sega All-Star Racing. That was the game before this one. You do also have a fair variety of mods to add to your car once you unlock them all in the adventure mode, so that's something to keep note of. This disappointing level of choice is also seen in track selection, with only 21 available, 18 at the start and the rest with the completion of the team adventure mode. Note though that these can also be played mirrored to experience the levels in a different angle. For me, although each level has their own theme, none of the levels really stood out massively for me, which is a shame. It may have been that there's a lot to think about whilst playing the game, for example, the team element I've spoken about, but none of the levels are hugely memorable in my opinion. Crash Team Racing goes a step further with character selection. The magic number is 53, however, some of these characters can be unlocked by playing the adventure mode. To be able to unlock all of the characters, you have to use Wumper Coins collected in-game. That is if you play the game an awful lot. Or you can shell out more of your own actual money to get them quicker via microtransactions. But to be honest, that's just annoying. The character selection is good, again, if you know the series. Although I'm more familiar with Crash than Sonic, there were still some characters I was unfamiliar with. There are also cart decals, wheels and paint jobs that can be unlocked with Wumper Coins as well. Track selection is excellent with a total of 39. These are all available from the start if you want to just do a single race. During the solo campaign you'll only experience 18 of them. However, if you just play single races, you'll experience remastered versions from Crash Nitro Kart, the well-received sequel to Crash Team Racing, and there are also eight original and new tracks. So overall then, a good selection, and some real standout levels. Two in particular that I love, a Spyro Circuit and Gingerbread Joyride. For anybody who's played Diddy Kong Racing and the level Frosty Village might understand why I love that level so much. It's very Christmassy. Like very Christmassy. For my favourite game for character and track variety, it has to go to Mario Kart. Although the number doesn't sound as impressive with 42 playable characters, once you add all the variants of all these characters, including for example different coloured Yoshis and Shy Guys etc, that are available from the start, the number's much higher. All of these characters, as a Nintendo fan, are instantly recognisable from the obvious, such as Mario, Link, Donkey Kong, to the more obscure like Lemmy Cooper, Dry Bowser or King Boo. It's great to get characters not just from the Mario sphere, but also others from the Nintendo universe. 
Sega, maybe you should take note for your next attempt. You also get numerous cartwheel and glider unlockables, which are earned really just by playing through the game. That means no microtransactions. Ubisoft, take note. Track selection is, in my opinion, the best of the three. There are 48 race courses, all with their own personality and theme. All of the new Mario Kart 8 courses are there, along with 23 retro courses from past iterations of Mario Kart, remastered, and they look better than ever on the Switch. In terms of multiplayer, all have the option of local play and online with a Nintendo Online account. Of the three, Sonic has the most limited multiplayer mode. Your options are race, team race and time trial for those playing local play. Although the team element is nice for the ability to give your teammates wisps to help them advance, really there's not a lot to keep me coming back to Sonic Team Racing from a multiplayer perspective. This is further emphasised by a lack of battle mode, which has come to be expected in recent kart games. Crash Team Racing on the other hand not only gives you the option of local and online play, but also has an extensive battle mode which can be played both single and multiplayer. The battle mode has 12 arenas you can choose from, as well as 5 different battles you can choose from. Standout battles are Last Kart Standing and Steal the Bacon. It should be noted that I did attempt to find online matches at around 12pm, admittedly in the week, however I struggled with both to find anyone to play with which is a shame. Can be advised to either wait till later in the day or the weekend to find other players to play against, or maybe play against people you know who have the game. Finally of course is the multiplayer juggernaut that is Mario Kart. With a lack of a single player adventure, or story as it were, you could argue that there's a lot riding on the multiplayer. Thankfully not only did I find people all over the world to race against straight away, it was quick and buttery smooth. You have both the option of racing or again a comprehensive battle mode with five different battle options which are very similar in style to Crash Team Racing. My only complaint is that I wish there were more battle arenas, with only eight as detailed as they are, it would be nice to have a couple more options. With the option of setting out exactly how you want to play, Mario Kart truly is a multiplayer's dream. Just a couple of things to take note of when discussing these carters. Firstly is performance. As can be expected with a native Nintendo game, Mario Kart runs incredibly smoothly at 60 frames per second. There are no long loading screens or graphical dips both in handheld or dock mode. Performance wise there's no game much better than Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Team Sonic Racing and Crash both run at 30 frames per second docked and handheld. I suppose it can be expected with both of these games on other consoles as well so it might be argued that graphically they have a lot more to keep up with. Especially with them not being native to Nintendo. But it is noticeable. Although the frame rate does not detract away from the game's fun, just know it's not as smooth as what you would find with Mario Kart. Load times as well are noticeably slower. Mario Kart is easily the quickest of the three, with load times of 10 to 15 seconds to get into a standard exhibition race. Team Sonic Racing you're looking at around 20 to 25 seconds, and Crash Team Racing upwards of 40 plus seconds. And this is after an update which was supposed to reduce the load times. Make of that what you will. It's pretty annoying to wait 40 plus seconds for a race which is only going to take you a few minutes to complete. Finally, just a quick note about difficulty. Mario Kart is incredibly accessible to both new and old players. You can adapt your game to your skill level. If you're completely new to kart racers, 50cc will be the way to go, but if you are an experienced racer, 200cc is there to give you a challenge. The other two games on the other hand I found less accessible, in fact at certain points in the game I was struggling. It's true that there are three difficulty modes on each game, but for me, who plays on normal difficulty most games, 
there were certain points of Sonic and Crash that I found genuinely challenging. If you are completely new to kart racers and have never had the pleasure of playing one before, it goes without saying that Mario Kart is the best choice for you. So how would I rank these games as a whole? Well, as someone who's played all three thoroughly, it'll be no surprise to anyone that overall, Mario Kart would be my game of choice, as it has been for millions of others around the world. The memorable tracks, the even more memorable characters, the smooth frame rate, the tight controls, the incredible multiplayer and the accessibility for all gives this game a leg up over the others discussed. Yes, there are some people who will prefer to have a single player adventure of sorts, and as somebody who plays single player adventures a lot, I think it would be nice as well. However, competing in all the Grand Prix at all the different speeds to try and win every race is a single player experience in itself. Thanks to the variety of tracks on offer here, you don't get bored racing again and again. It's part of the reason why it is my most played Nintendo game on the Nintendo Switch and I can't see it being overtaken anytime soon. A true 10 out of 10 game for me. Crash Team Racing has a lot going for it. The brilliant single player campaign, the upgraded visuals and the track variety as well as battle mode to keep me playing. And if you're a fan of karting games should not be dismissed. For me, however, the annoyance of the long, long loading times, the not quite as memorable characters and the microtransactions to pick up every modification in the game is frustrating and does hold it back from being a top tier game for me. I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Team Sonic Racing is an interesting game. As much as I admire the ambition of giving karting games a new identity, with the team mechanic and the interest in story mode, there are a few too many quirks to rate this game too highly. The unfamiliar characters, the uninspiring track design is really unforgivable in a kart racing game. Add to that the lack of the battle mode and the unidentifiable wisps, in many ways I did find this game a little frustrating at times. That being said, I did have some fun with the game, and for that reason, I rate the game at a 6 out of 10. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, and tell me your favourite kart games down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.